everybody, my name is Pete, I'm 23 years old, I live in Bannister, New Jersey with my folks, and although upon first glance I'm not exactly the Koi Haim type, if you were to give me one chance at what sounded like a lovesick fool, I want to tell you about who I am looking for in a potential life partner and what traits would attract me to her the most. Um, first and foremost, even though it's not a complete deal breaker, I kind of want a girl who looks like the all-American girl next door. Like this girl here, sweet, grounded, down to us, yet with that slight interest vibe, that would just be a stupendous turn on for me. I can get behind this woman pretty easily. Um, also, I like a girl who's very active with her hands. I like for her to be a sonic storyteller with her hands. She has to be creative at all times to use these powers, these tools that God gave us at birth for good instead of evil. Um, if she could be a regular Picasso, well, that kind of perfectionist level attitude is something I, I may not consider, but if she was to create something um, that would serve well, if she was to ever play a game like this, if we have a couple game nights, well, uh, that would be fine too, because I do enjoy game nights at home, I'm kind of a homebody most of the time. And above all, she has to be honest, she has to be willing to tell the truth, even if it means putting our relationship um, at a timeout, I would uh, very much appreciate that. I don't want my name featured in some tabloid like this, um, alleging that I messed around with a certain celebrity behind my girlfriend's back, because that would do me a world of hurt and her a terrible, heartbreaking disservice. So uh, those are the qualities that I seek in a potential life partner. And one last thing, I am not really uh, an expensive date, maybe a bowling night, uh, a game night at home, a uh, burger one, a couple of slices on the go, maybe some thrift store shopping, window shopping, I am a fairly inexpensive date. So um, keep that in mind too, I don't tug on a wallet as hard as any other man would. So uh, look me up and I will be happy to get in touch with you. Thanks. Welcome to this bodaciously, if that's even a word, special edition of the Thrift Store Rundown, where we bring Hollywood home out of budget. In case you didn't get the memo, today is an all 80s themed show. Fine reviewing three board games all made in the 1980s, along with a special bonus item to tie into one of the games a bit later on. By the end of the show, if you don't want to grab any one or all three of these games at your nearest thrift shop or buy them online, or if you don't have them already on hand, you might as well just be eating your shorts. For I promise you, any one of these games has the potential to become a real hot throb in your home. And speaking of hot throb, that's exactly where we start you off with. Round 1, Milton Bradley's Hot Throb, the dream date game for all girls who like boys. Let me correct that and put an age range here. Between 13 to 21. I really can't deem this unsafe for kids under 13, although I wouldn't recommend this game. And as far as anyone above that age range, well, if you take your lust for teen hot robs, IOL, well, you could end up like Drake Bell. Or worse. Guilty? How do you plead to count two disseminating matter harmful to juveniles, first degree misdemeanor? Guilty. With that a little precaution in mind, this is for two to six players and was purchased for 25% off the sticker price of $9.99. Here you can choose your boyfriend from 60 gorgeous guys, such as the captain of the football team. Yes, that omnipresent, omni annoying, show off captain of the football team. I hate them! Nicknamed Lips. So you know he has the potential to be a spot-on kisser. And of course, the Teenage Millionaire. When's the last time you ever heard of a Teenage Millionaire? Oh yeah, since the invention of TikTok and YouTube! <sighs> Speaking of that, the producers of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire sort of hedged their bets by launching a teen-based spinoff of the show and putting it on freeform so that it could serve as the anchor to an otherwise lackluster weekend programming block. Let's take a look inside and see what you're going to get here. So here we have the instruction sheet. 
It's double-sided, by the way. By the way, with two of the three games, I'm going to give you ten seconds to look at the game's instruction sheets or pamphlets so you have a better understanding of how to play the games. If you like, you can pause and enlarge the screen so um, you have a better look at the game's instructions because I'm not going to be going over the instructions. Two of them are fairly simple to play, but your ten seconds to look at this sheet begins now. Alright, just a few more seconds to look at this side, and we'll go over the object of the game. Alright, score the most points by guessing which boyfriends your opponents like best. Contents include the game board, 60 boyfriend cards, 4 decks with 46 personality cards per deck, uh, 3 plastic card stands, and a score pad. So here we have the game board. This is really reminiscent of that classic dating game show hosted by Chuck Woolery, Love Connection. And not just with the design of the game board, but with the qualities that you're seeking out in your potential hot drop, or that your opponents might seek out for you. So let's take a look at the hot drops now. Oh, I grabbed a couple of the personality cards. Uh, the personality cards themselves, while well, purple being the least desirable personalities, and the remaining color-coded personality trait cards, yellow, um, light blue, light green, something like that, and orange, well, they range from, uh, well, he might be worth one or two school dances, all the way to marriage material. We'll get to those in a moment. And as you can see here, this game's already been used. Hey, this game stood the test of time. How else would it made its way to this gift shop? These are the hot gloves. Uh, that are vying for your heart, and vice versa. Eddie, Scott, Matt, Chuck, Drew, Steve, Peter. Alright, score one for Peter! Heck, you're my Peter Kavinsky today. Did I just say that? Ugh, I don't even like Noah Centineo. <laughs> uh, Jim, Jesse, Jerry, Jake, Greg, Frankie, Eric, Cut, Mark, Max, and Rex. Special bonus if you love pets. Luke, by the way, rest in peace to the original 80s hot drop. I'm sorry, 90s hot drop. Luke Terry. I'm going a decade backwards. Sorry. Uh, Kevin, Marty, Bo, Mitch, Chip, and well, you figured out the rest. Pretty bland names for such 80s hot drops, but hey, what's in a name? So let's have a look at some of the personality cards here, the personality traits. Um, just grab a couple here from the yellow section. A DJ on a local radio station. Alright. Captain of the debating team. Couch Potato. Since you know I have uh, an affinity for everything and anything pop culture, you probably know which, um, well, in speaking for the context of the game, Guy, I would want to uh, go for the DJ on the local radio station. I am not gay by any means, but I tell you right now, that's not going to stop me from having a gay old time uh, recommending this board game to you. Here we have the light blue personality cards here, wants to win the Oscar for Best Actor. Whoa, slow your roll there, buddy. The Emmys come first. I'm actually filming this on the day of the Emmy nominations, prime time. Watch to be an actor at a daytime soap. So we definitely uh, have somebody who wants to be an actor, either in film or TV. And if that doesn't work, well you can always be a VJ for MTV. Maybe you can be instrumental in the relaunch of MTV's TRL. You can be the next Carson Daly for all I care. So how about a couple of orange personality cards. Video game wizard wearing a lot of gold jewelry. I like to know how you afford gold jewelry. As I said, I'm a fairly inexpensive date. I would definitely choose the video game wizard even though I'm not a huge gamer. And as for the least desirable personality cards, enjoys crushing cans on his head, breaks out of the pretty wash around pretty girls, a wash being not so pretty, but hey, 
pimples that popped all over the world and girls think that marriage material if a boyfriend can do that for her. Pop her pimples on her back neck, whatever. Well, that's your call. If you want to be a Dr. Pimple Popper Stan and accredit her to finding a soulmate, that's your decision. Bumps it to us and tips over his own feet. Uh, Mr. Claps, so to speak. Oh well. Here we have your answer sheet. It's divided into um, three categories, three questions. If he asks, would you like to dance? Will you go on a date with me? Do you want to go steady? From the occasional school dance to a few dates to a serious relationship. Which should be whimsical and lighthearted if you were still in the 80s. Nowadays, not so much. Of course, you know that this has been written on with answers in pen, which can never be erased, so this game has definitely been used, and these three seats in this answer pad can never be used. Make that four. Anything else? Uh, no, that's about it. Four that can no longer be used. The West is fair game. And it's a pretty thick seat, so you still have a fairly unlimited amount of gameplay uh, at your um, leisure. Just make sure you use a number two pencil and an eraser. I don't recommend using pens because you can never erase pen ink. So there you go. These are your three character hot blob stands. I think we're missing one here. Who is the uh, content of the game? Nope, all three are here. Yep, three card stands. This should have been four. But it's their call. So as you can guess through the personality traits cards, well, they are definitely pop culture um, centered. Even if this game wasn't pop culture centered, I still would buy it because it's actually a part of the board game collection of two of my hardcore Hollywood bargain hunters, Mo Hutz and Dylan Paltrow, who I met at Unique before. Super nice, super awesome. Their board game collection for you 80s nostalgia geeks is one that I think you'll believe is extraordinarily radical. This is one of two games in their collection that I have purchased, the other one being Sweet Valley High. I will link that below because that's also an indie game, and it's inspired by Francie Pascal's book series as well as the TV series of the same name. I will also leave in the description below a link where you can watch detailed gameplay of this. I will also ask you a question later on. If you want me to do gameplay of any of these games, all the ones that are already in my library that I have reviewed or have not yet reviewed with David. So, uh, I definitely look forward to your answers in the comments section below. If I will ask that question later on, there's no need for this, it'll just take up too much space. Let's put this back here. By the way, you put all of your corresponding personality trait cards in these sections here. And that's that. Now, you can judge from the following commercial if this game is time-tested and approved with streaks of lustful joy. The new game from Milton Bradley where you get to pick from Dogs of gorgeous guys And try to decide who your friends will pick Here's the guy for you What a hump, check him out Yeah, but his sneaker size is bigger than his IQ So, come on, looks aren't everything They're not <laughs> Heartthrob from Milton Bradley It's totally serious Pretty enticing, huh? Love at first sight and I'll admit, it was kind of love at first sight when I saw this because it took me back to two of my most hardcore viewers, Mo and Dylan. They have this again as part of their board game collection. Johnny's a hunk! Brad's athletic! And Greg has the cute smile! Who's really the guy for you? On looks alone, pick your hot drop from three photo cards. Then, guess which guys your friends will pick. If you're correct, you could win this dreamy dating game. You could fall in love at first sight, but be careful. Personality cards will reveal more about the guys. Some of what you learn makes them more appealing, but other things are a real turn off. You must decide if looks or personality are more important. I have to say, we made tremendous strides uh, in deciding which is more important among these two traits. 
Bet you didn't realize that Johnny cracks his knuckles and bites his fingernails. Could you tell that Brad still sleeps with a teddy bear? And what about Greg? Did you know he eats bugs to gross out girls? Play hot Bob and find out what it takes to make a great date. But I gotta say, a date with you in this board game? Well, that would make for an exceptional date night at home, family game night, whatever you want to call it. This goes out to you, Mo and Dylan. Dylan, I think you're a real hot Bob for landing a sweetheart like Mo, and for getting a game like this. You are definite proof that hot blobs can sometimes defy all those typical tropes that 80s hot blobs and 90s hot blobs of the time are branded with from the buffs of their career. Heck, anyone who gets this game has the potential to become a real hot blob. And speaking of hot blob, before we move on to the next game, here's a special segment on how to become an 80s hot blob, or at the very least, attempt to model like one. Round two, draw, partner. It's time to show off your artistic side to win the day on Win, Lose, or Draw. The high-speed game of sketching and guessing that puts Pictionary to shame. It's as much fun as the TV game show, albeit played slightly differently than the TV game show. It was purchased for $3.99. It's for three or more players, ages 12 and up, once again, from Milton Bradley. So round two has a double meaning because this is the second Milton Bradley game I'm featuring in here. Once again, as with the hot blob instruction sheet, I'm giving you 10 seconds to look at the trifold gameplay and instruction pamphlet here. As always, you can pause and enlarge the screen if you want a clearer, accurate understanding of how to play this game, even though it is remarkably simple to play. Your 10 seconds begins now. Time's up! Of course, I'll give you a extra closer look at gameplay here, and I will leave a detailed gameplay demonstration video in the description below. But for now, let's just show you all the components here. Let's see, they're listed here in the instruction pamphlet. They contain one game board, one die, 24 small pawns, one timer, one pencil and a pad of paper, and a large square pawn. And they said a whole card and 503 cards, each containing two phrases, phrase A and phrase B, which equal 1,006 phrases to be sketched. When I first opened this up to demonstrate my video, not really demonstrate, but to uh, showcase, the cards were just a whole mess. It was a complete mess of cards. Like Washington, D.C. If you get the Netflix So House of Cards, which totally rocks, you understand that reference. This is the Sand Timer, my favorite timers ever. I just love these things. They're so articulate and so nostalgic. They're awesome. This is your ace in the whole card. I'm keeping this separate from the Phrase cards contained in that little box and packed rather tightly. Let's see your ace in the card here, so we know which card you're aiming for. This is this is the winning card here. We'll show the phrase cards in a moment. These are your pawns. And even though this copy didn't come with a pencil, at least it came with an eraser. That's fine. I have plenty of pencils shopping and not shopping here in the house. And I assume you have a few pencils at home. And a pencil shopping, if need be. I have that too. 
Anyway, inside, your multicolored pawns. The outfit of the game is to win at least one of each of these pawns. And of course, the ace in the whole card. Matter of fact, let's show you this. It's as easy as pie. You don't have to be an artist to score high. In fact, people who are all thumbs are often the winners. Every bunny question you might have about how to play the game is answered here, right under your very nose, in the following rules. And even though you might think that a picture is worth a thousand words, please read the rules carefully because the game plays quite differently from the TV show. How do you know that I got that all right? This draws don't say game with over a thousand fun cliches, proverbs, and phrases to sketch and decipher. Well, I read the translation down here. <laughs> Be the first player to collect four different colored pawns to the ace in the whole card. Do the scene by sketchy visual clues of well-known cliches and phrases in such a way that they are guessed, or by guessing more of these visual clues than any other player. If you play with more than six players, then you form teams, with each team trying to collect four different colored pawns and the ace in the whole card to win. You may not have more than one of these multicolored pawns. One of each. And they are in blue, um, orange, I guess, red, and pink. With the large square pond here, the large white square pond. I'll show you the game board in a moment. These are your drawing pads. They've definitely been used, as you can see here from the top. A few pages might have been ripped from the top here. Once again, I really can't fault whoever previously owned this. This was made in the 80s, and for the most part, otherwise, it stood the test of time. I have not, however, looked at the game board itself. So you and I are going to be looking at this for the first time together. Actually, let's show you the die here. The all-important die, six sides. How many did it come with numbers instead of the usual black dots on a white uh, cube? I don't want to spill the the pawns here, because if I do that, well, we got a problem on our hands. I have a special bonus item that I'm going to tie into this item when I'm done showcasing it to you, because two of the contestants on a spinoff of Win, Lose, or Draw, aimed towards youngsters, happen to work together decades later on an engrossing documentary about child stardom in the 80s and 90s. I'll tell you about that later. You might have heard about it. It's on Hulu. But for now, let's show you the board. Okay, it's a little kicky. Get out. Get out. There you go. If you get stuck, get mean. Give it a little whack. That's what so I said. Small game board, but compressed rather tightly in there. Very fit and snug. So this is a game board. You have your multicolored pawn spaces here. You gotta sketch out a phrase or correctly guess a phrase to get one of the pawns. And of course, you have uh, the spades here. That that's your ace in the whole card spades. Once you have through setting up the game, then you select a sketcher with all the other players being guessers. And those roles change from player to player throughout the game. The sketcher has the timer pad and pencil and the die and the large square pawn in the card box. So the sketcher really is in control. And everyone can become the sketcher. Just understand that if you're the sketcher, you can't speak. Nor can you write any clues that contain words. Like here, Heart of Gold. You're not to write the words uh, AU or 14K, words or numbers, in any of the clues here. If you want to write Heart of Gold, you can write the hearts and draw some gold jewelry, so it helps to have some um, colored pencils alongside this. As far as the phrases go, well, with a thousand and six phrases all compressed rather tightly into this box, the possibilities for endless hilarity are, well, they are just ever in your favor to quote the Hunger Games, even though I don't like the Hunger Games. But you will definitely be Lambering and hungry for more once you play Win, Lose, or Draw. The phrases and all the other sayings in here range from easy, such as an uphill battle, take Battle of San Juan Hill or Battle Hymn of the Republic, to 
eat crow like Wendy Williams. They range from those easy faces to more hard faces, hence the 12 and up age demographic. Cry your heart out, that's easy. Off the cuff, that's a little bit hard. But hey, you should have a real ball trying to figure out really cool looking or really funny looking uh, ritual demonstrations, ritual clues for all of these sayings. Pull yourself, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and figure out how to get this game because I assure you, it's a real rarity. This is just a few phrases. And I have to say, win, lose, or draw is truly Yeah, what he said. Oh, and regarding what I said about Freeform ever doing a spin-off of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for Teens or Young Adults, really, for that matter. The producers of Win, Lose, or Draw at the time actually did just that. They did a spin-off called Teen Win, Lose, or Draw. And I mentioned that for good reason. Out of love. Two of the contestants competing on a special celeb edition of Win, Lose, or Draw actually work together a bit later on, as I've already mentioned. One of them, who just so happens to be featured, I'll worry about this a little later, in an issue of People Magazine, which I have right over here, purchased for 99 cents and was published April 5th, 2021. And that would be the newest love of my life, right here on the right. <sighs> Soleil Mufai. Longtime friends Brian Austin Green and the artist formerly, formerly known as Punky Brewster, um, hug it out on the beach March 31st in Malibu with new material being filmed for her Kid 90 documentary on Hulu which failed to earn any nominations at this year's Primetime Emmys. In lieu of congratulations, I had to express condolences. I'm sorry, Soleil. But I am not kidding when I say that Soleil is the newest love of my life. I fell head over heels for this woman because of the documentary, the Punky Brewster reboot trailer, and just hearing so much about her, and of course looking up on Google Images and obscene amount of times to count. I'm sorry, but I am just head over heels for this woman right now. And if you recall, this previous weekend on TSR, I made my Atlantic Olsen size cross on Soleil Moon Fly quite uh, prominent when I reviewed her four page article on the previous issue of People Magazine promoting her documentary Kid 90 on Hulu. I mentioned the Emmys and documentaries for a specific reason, the same reason that I'm going to, uh, Mention this Billie Eilish feature here and five things we're talking about for a specific reason. Billie Eilish pulls back the wig. And I see having green hair, so the pop star revealed that she wore a wig of her signature black and lime locks to the Grammys before debuting a new blonde two days later. And her stylist said it took six weeks to strip the color. Her Apple TV documentary, based on her concept, The World's a Little Blurry, picked up a few nominations at this year's Emmys, mainly in the technical creative arts categories, music direction, and a couple of nominations for sound. Now, even though the documentary got nominated, Billie Eilish didn't get nominated herself. But given her talent, that'll come one day. Hey, you can draw up your own conclusions, but I myself would have considered myself a real loser for not picking up this total winner of a game. Round 3. Tabloid Teasers. Have you ever stood near a supermarket newsstand, browsing through the periodicals, wondering, who makes this stuff up? Well now, you can! This Preston creation, for 3-6 to six players ages 10 to adult, allows you and dares you to create headlines more outrageous than the real ones. Featuring over 350 actual headlines to get you started. 
from the National Enquirer, Star, the Sun Magazine, The Globe, the National Examiner, News Extra, and Weekly World News. This was picked up for 25% off the price of $3.99, and well, the box out alone is surprisingly relevant today. Take this headline, for instance, from Tabloid Teasers. Mona Lisa, a man? New proof shows she was a he. Given today's culture, I wouldn't be surprised if this actually turned out to be a real headline in the not-too-distant future. Or maybe Mona Lisa is not a man at all, and they could be a combo deal. It translates in non-binary, like Demi Lovato or Jonathan Van Ness. No offense. I do miss calling Demi Lovato a smoke, so... The object of this game is to move ahead on the game board by guessing the real headline, or by having other players pick your headline as the real one. The first player to receive at least one vote for his headline once he reaches the finish space wins. Contents include the game board, 120 cards with 360 headlines, a plastic card folder, six tabloid movers, voting dice, answer tags, and instructions. Now, up until this point, the only other video on YouTube featuring this game was home video footage from the early 90s of a couple of preschool age children trying to play this game. That video has since been taken down, I assume by the original uploader who shut down his entire YouTube channel, because I guess he wasn't that active on it to begin with. So I guess I'm the chosen one to preserve this game's legacy. I shall take that as a point of pride, because once you understand this game, and once you start playing it, I have a feeling you'll understand why I've been chosen to preserve its legacy, and you should too. Because there is no other video on YouTube other than this one, which I saw brand as a YouTube exclusive, I'm actually going to give you a little more than 10 seconds to look at this gameplay instruction pamphlet, so you have a better understanding of the game. And it starts now. That's gameplay. Hopefully you paused and enlarged the video so you have a better understanding. Now let's show you the components. First and foremost, the star of this little show, the headline cards. Let's grab about three of them here off the top of this uh, whack. 29-year-old beauty marries a giraffe. A jilted lover spikes ready with laxatives and a chicken finds buried treasure. Trust me, if you didn't see these blanks being filled already, you could come up with some crazier headlines than these. This really does exemplify the express that you can't make this stuff up. But then again, you can! You have to. That's the whole point of winning this game. A chicken fighting buried Tressa, well that's Mad Magazine <laughs> material. A children lover spiking winning with laxatives, that's investigation discovery material, if uh, those laxatives happen to be fatal. And a 29-year-old beauty married a giraffe? Well, needless to say, that's Jerry Springer material. Does this scream I married a horse vibes to you or not? This is bestiality, and not only is it illegal in most parts of the Western world, it is one of the most despicably disgusting proclamations of quote-unquote Love for animals I have ever seen in my days. If PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, was to condemn any act against an animal, this is the act that should be condemned the most. Full force. Never mind a CD Bacon or petitioning the town of Tucky, Texas to change its name to Tofucky, Texas every Thanksgiving. And do you really think that the residents of Turkey, Texas don't like meat? Have you been to Texas, PETA? Fat chance. That's me, I'm Peter. I'm not talking about you, Peter. I'm talking about Peter. Somebody better have something to say to me pretty damn soon, or I'm gonna have something to say to them. And that, my friends, is bullshit! Bestiality sucks! Moving on to less extreme headlines. 
Clint Eastwood is quietly having Blank. Blank protects the Doc's home from robbers. And Blank, Lisa Marie Presley quits drugs after, well, Blank. Sorry, I draw Blank after mentioning Lisa Marie Presley. Haven't heard much of her in a while. Anyway, Clint Eastwood is having hair transplants. A giant man-eating plant protects Doc's home from robbers. And Lisa Marie Presley quits drugs after warning from her father's ghost. Ooh, ghost. The staple of any uh, tabloid news magazine. In print, not so much on TV. At least not anymore. Wife divorces husband because he blank. Woman gives birth at blank. And Vanna TV soccer, of course, Vanna White of Wheel of Fortune. I had my first sex blank. Cut it over, throw in the blanks. And well, a wife got super glued to the toilet. A woman gave birth and a bingo came and just kept playing. And Vanna had her first time on a golf course at 15. Who was the lucky brazen fella, huh? I want names, immediately. If those headlines are the ones that the game suggested, then you need to do them a big favor and one-up them by creating your own crazy headlines. You can write down your own headlines here in one of six answer pads. This one here, or the other five here. Of course, some of the answer seats have already been filled in, surprisingly with colored pencil. Not often that you use colored pencil for and the seats, uh, I would reserve the colored pencils for the win, lose, or draw game for coloring in your sketches. So you can tell that this game has definitely been used. And used rather wisely. I mean, there's still enough material, enough blank seats in, in the answer pads for you to have a grand old time coming up with your own outrageous answers that would make the managing editor of Inside the Distant Plus. <laughs> And inside of this, it is fairly tame compared to some of the headlines you'll be seeing in this tabloid teasers game. Uh, and that would go for Hot Copy, um, Real TV, um, what was that other show? It was on WCBS TV, um, Day and Date. Yeah, that too. Wow, I remember all these tabloid news magazines from the 90s, and that's mind boggling because I've never seen any of them. <laughs> they got for YouTube and commercials. Anyway. This is the plastic card holder. It can hold seven cards here. I'm given these seven slots. These are your tabloid movers, multicolored, and they're in the shape and look of uh, a stack of tabloid news magazines. They actually do look like newspapers. I hope you get the detailing here. Tabloid teasers, and they're all bound by some sort of rubber band. This also came with a pencil, pretty sharpened, small, and well, we'll just say that this eraser is pretty much rendered unusable. But I got some pencils in the house. Uh, these are your dice, and this dice determines how many votes you get for your headline. Again, the after of the game, uh, to win the game is not only by correctly, correctly guessing the right headline, but getting the most amount of votes for your headline. So now that you took a look at the components individually, let's look at the star of our little faux magazine show, the Game Board. And I have to say, given its simplistic styling and design, this is one of the more so ranky looking game boards I have ever seen in a game for the past. Look here, we have Snoop, The Gossip News, Super The Gossip News, they're relatively tame names compared to the other names for the faux tabloid news magazines. Put it all around this game board. My favorite being the Tattle Times, and second place goes to the Scandal Sheet. I also like the National Inquisitor, I would rate that as third place. Uh, Total Examiner as well, Extra Yarn of all. You land here when you roll the dice and move your pawns to this space. Well, you roll the dice again. By the way, you land on anything else other than start or finish. And uh, you will have to fill in or guess uh, a correct headline for any one of the headline cards. So, 
a good knowledge of anything and everything inside of this in hard copy real TV day and date. Um, that is suggested. It's not really required, but it's definitely suggested. Let's get a good look around the game board here because it is just so swanky. Like, dude, it might be so simplistic in its design, but it's real sexy. Yes, boys and girls, ingenuity can be sexy. And brazen ingenuity, well, that is just a magnificently hot turn on. Especially if you're a nostalgic geek like me. One of these headlines appeared in an actual tabloid newspaper. The other three were made up by a group of friends playing tabloid teasers. Which one is the real one? Putting cucumbers between your toes cures arthritis. Sleeping with your mothballs under your pillow. Eating with your elbows or taking a spaghetti bath. This actually can cure arthritis. Oh wait, no it can't, that's a lie. But that is the actual headline. In tabloid teasers, the fun begins when you are given part of a headline that appeared in one of the national tabloids. Then all players fill in the blank to create a wild and outrageous headline of their own. Now all the headlines, including the real one, are read out loud, and players vote for the one they think is real. If you're right, you move ahead. You also advance for you fool another player into thinking your incredible headline is the real one. If you're ready for an hysterical type of absurdity and fun, you're ready for tabloid teasers. And again, if you voted for number four, taking a spaghetti bath to cure arthritis, you picked the real headline. Tabloid teasers is not sponsored by or associated with any of the tabloids whose headlines are used in the game by one of any staffers of any of the tabloids ever knew about this game and actually bought it and played it at home with their friends or family. Just to ease some of their guilt. By the way, with this game, you're going to have to do some fact checking, quality control, something that uh, many staffers at tabloid magazines back then knew little about. In any event, I hope Deborah Norville is watching, because if Inside Edition is ever going to become a profitable franchise, not just a profitable news magazine and the best in their craft, multiple Emmy nominations, but not just that, a profitable news magazine, Inside Edition better come up with a board game of their own, because as far as I'm concerned, this fell down the gauntlet. You won't believe your lying eyes when you pick this bodacious game up. It's ruling time! It's time to find out where each of these items stand here. 20 crabs up at stake, a maximum of 5 crabs per item can be awarded. Now before I rate all 3 of the games first, and then the magazine, I want to say one thing regarding win, lose, or draw on tabloid teasers. The one common denominator that puts both of them at an advantage above hot rob is that they give you more freedom to express your creativity. In the case of win, lose, or draw, Drawing all of those pictures and tabloid teasers coming up with your own ridiculous headlines that will leave your dudes scratching their heads wondering how in the world did you make that stuff up without really trying? You deserve a pure surprise or a diamond prize for stupidity. In Hot Rob's case, it's locked into a certain model that just has you filling in the blanks without adding much creativity to your answers. It's one positive trade off though. It's a seriously attractive looking box here. The pink background, the hot rod photos, um, the photos of the girl who's seriously crushing on all three of them, uh, the typography, just everything graphic wise, just screams 80s teen hot rod lust. Seriously, all three of these games, you're gonna be crushing on for a long time to come. They get five claps apiece, the maximum. Now, aside from a small vampire diaries section, you know, Paul Wesley and Summer Holder. There's not much to this issue of People Magazine, other than what I showed you, the small Billy Adams mention, and of course, one of the American standards of the 80s, Punky Brewster, Soleil Moon Fry, the newest love of my life. For her, and for that alone, I'm grading this issue, four and a half out of five claps. Hello, torn cover here, in the interest of security, 
try to withhold the identity of the person who originally got this uh, or had it delivered as part of a subscription. I get that, I understand that, which is why I'm not waiting for. It gets four and a half, therefore, the final total for this is 19 and a half out of 20. Now, you might be asking me, Pete, we're out of touch with the 80s because these games are out of stock. What do we do? Well, the one thing you shouldn't do is have a cow. As if you're out of touch with the 80s, because in the description, I will provide links for all these games, plus the magazine, for low prices. Maybe not as low as the prices you see here for these thrift store copies, but I assure you, they'll be for low prices. There will also be links for gameplay demonstrations for both Hot Rob and Win, Lose, or Draw. I will also link the Win, Lose, or Draw Teen Edition episode with Leonardo DiCaprio, and again, Soleil Moon Fry. The name alone, oh, it just makes you swoon. And I'll also link below, because I mentioned Soleil Moon Fry, um, last weekend's video with her four-page article on another issue of People Magazine regarding her Hulu documentary Kid 90. So just click show more in the description, you'll find all that info, you'll find all those links. Oh, and in case you don't know, Soleil means sun in French, so in English translation, it's sun moon fly that I'm seriously crushing on right now. Although ironically, the English translation makes it sound more Korean than anything, so let's just call her Soleil moon fly. <sighs> in any event, taking a trip back in time to one of the most radical eras of any generation, without the cost of assembling a time machine, and doing it all for dope discounts? Well, that's a pretty cool beans way to make you a hot commodity at your next family game night. Thanks for watching. Got a book, but you know I'll catch you again next time on the Thrift Side. Later.